What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologians. Should we try to convince people that the Bible is true with science and data and numbers? Do the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have anything to teach us? And what can we learn from John Calvin's view of people understanding and believing the Bible? Well, you're not going to want to miss this one because this is really important. So stick around and check this out. So this video is going to be a long one, so buckle up. But why do we believe that the Bible is true? What's different about us as Christians? Is it about the amount of evidence that we present to others? Should we try to use science to persuade people? John MacArthur weighs in. Traditional approaches have been to try to prove the Bible to unregenerate people by amassing all kinds of evidences that they can process through their fallen intellects in the futility of their mental function and the ignorance that is in them and the darkness of their mind and the hardness of their heart and the callousness and sensuality of their soul. We can amass all the prophetic evidences, scientific evidence, miraculous evidence, historical, archaeological evidence, the evidence of, of transformed lives. And in the end, while certainly all of those are reasonable and a true representation of Scripture, they cannot take the scales off the blind eyes, they cannot give life to the dead soul. Scripture tells us how this works in one of the great texts in the Scripture. Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The theme of the section starting in chapter 1 and verse 18 and running to the end of chapter 2 is divine wisdom. Divine wisdom, the word wise or wisdom appears twenty times or so here, contrasted with foolishness which appears about a half a dozen times. This is about divine wisdom. And the whole section explains why people reject the wisdom of God and why other people accept the wisdom of God, why people reject the Scripture, the gospel, the cross, and other people accept the Scripture, the gospel, and the cross. You see, the wisdom of God is His choice to regenerate whom He will, and we believe because of a supernatural miracle. So is science opposed to the Bible? Well, of course not. Science is possible because God upholds the universe in a uniform, consistent way. But when you look at this debate, it's often framed as if we need to provide more evidence to the unbeliever, when in reality we should be, be proclaiming the Word of God with authority and power and the gospel declared clearly, which is the purpose of this channel. But I wanted to take a trip down memory road back to a time when science was on the side of fun and reality. <laughs> He's got the canister. Get it. I got it. So if you like pizza and the Ninja Turtles, science used to be fun, but now it's often used as a way to try to convince the unbeliever that the Bible can be trusted, when in reality we need to stand up and proclaim the gospel with authority and power and recognize that it is the Holy Spirit that gives life. When you look at Dr. MacArthur's testimony, here's what he had to say in this sermon. Where did that faith come from? Why was I so convinced of the truth of Scripture? I hadn't studied apologetics or defenses of Scripture. I hadn't read a lot of that. It was just in my heart a complete commitment to the Word of God. And when I sat down and think about why I trusted the Bible, I looked at some passages of Scripture that came into play. I remembered that Jesus had said to Peter in Matthew 16, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And that's the reason that Peter knew that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, was because of divine disclosure, divine revelation. This is important because we don't need to apologize for the Bible. We need to preach doctrine. We need to preach it with clarity. 
He says this, I know the Bible is true because the Spirit of God has convinced me of it. I wrote that 25 plus years ago, more than that at this point. In light of this, I said in the next paragraph, and you know you're in trouble when you keep quoting yourself. In light of this, I suggest a change in our approach. We've been saying prophecy has been fulfilled. The Bible is scientifically accurate. Miracles were performed with eyewitnesses. The biblical message of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ results in a revolutionary change in the lives of the persons who believe. Of course, all that's true. Because of all these proofs, we reason the Bible is the word of God. To quote Lee Corso, not so fast. Here's what we should be saying, and here's what we should do. And then I wrote, instead, I propose that we declare the Bible is the word of God. Therefore, prophecy has been fulfilled. Miracles have taken place. Scientific statements are accurate, and lives have been transformed. Confidence in the scripture begins with the work of the spirit. This is essential. You must see the supernatural nature of the gospel and the power of the gospel, or you'll never preach the gospel. I believe the Bible was written by the God of the universe to reveal to, to reveal himself to humanity. I believe the Bible is the only authoritative and absolutely reliable revelation from God with regard to the origin of man, his deliverance, his salvation, moral and spiritual standards he is to live by, and by the ultimate destiny. I also believe the Bible is true. Every detail, even to the very words of the original manuscripts, God was the author. And I concluded with this, the spirit has led me to this uh, supportable confidence. So it's a spiritual work in the life of the believer. And this is very essential because we need to proclaim the Bible with love and kindness and authority. We need to go declare the gospel, talk to people about the gospel. We need to stop trying to apologize for the Bible and apologize for people's intellects. Science is not opposed to reason and the Bible is not opposed to reason. If people are being honest, the problem though is a spiritual problem. So here's what MacArthur came to conclude later in his life as he studied John Cal Calvin? Calvin? Is that right? John Calvin. Later in my life, I was exposed to some of the writing of a well-known theologian named John Calvin. And being curious about what he believed in regard to this same issue, I began to discover some very interesting things. Listen to John Calvin. The Scriptures alone exist as the means by which God has been pleased to consign His truth to perpetual remembrance. The full authority which they obtain with the faithful proceeds from no other consideration than that they are persuaded that they, the words of Scripture, proceeded from heaven as if God had been heard giving utterance to them." This he says in his Institutes. He further says, the Scriptures themselves manifest plainly that God is the speaker. We are never established in the faith of this doctrine until we are indubitably persuaded that God is the author. Being illuminated, therefore, by Him, that is, the Holy Spirit, we no longer believe either on our own judgment or that of others that Scripture is from God. But in a way that surpasses human judgment, we are perfectly assured that it has come to us by the ministry of men from the very mouth of God. We feel the firmest conviction that we hold an invincible truth, this by the Holy Spirit." Well, Calvin got it right. We're not surprised, are we? William Neasel said that Calvin considers the word of the Bible, quote, as a dead and ineffectual thing for us if it is not divinely vivified, given life, and so soon as it is separated from Him, that is Christ, it becomes a dead body of letters without soul. He understood that you only believe the Scripture when the Spirit of God gifts you with that faith and confidence. Confident trust in the Word of God and the Scripture is then not the result of rational arguments and the work of human intellect and reason or emotion. It is the work of the Spirit in the heart. Calvin further says, for as God alone is a sufficient witness to Himself in His own Word, so also the Word will never 
gain credit in the hearts of men until it is sealed by the internal testimony of the Spirit. It is necessary, therefore, that the same Spirit who spoke by the mouth of the prophets penetrate into our hearts in order that He might persuade us that they faithfully delivered what had been divinely entrusted to them. So he says, let it remain then a fixed truth that those whom the Spirit inwardly teaches firmly acquiesce to the Scripture. Our confidence in the Word of God comes from the Spirit of God. It is a component of the sovereign gift of regeneration. Regeneration is scarcely talked about when it comes to this conversation, except on this channel. I feel like I'm always talking about it because the grace of God is the only reason we believe the Bible. It's the only reason we're Christian. It's the only reason we have life and responded in repentance and faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. The authority, though, of the Word of God is my problem. Doing evangelism for about 11 years publicly and all over the place, people are always trying to make excuses for why they can't can't do evangelism and different things like that. And it really has to do with the authority of the Bible. It really has to do with a low view of Scripture. They don't really believe that the Bible is sufficient proclaimed to re to regenerate people, that God really saves people through the proclaimed gospel. But if you look at the way our churches operate, the good ones, they preach the Bible with authority and power every Sunday. And yet when it comes to our desire to reach others, we have a totally different approach. Why is that? Well, because we may not actually be consistent in our approach to our practice. Orthopraxy does not match our orthodoxy. Our practice doesn't match our doctrine. But the authority of the Holy Scripture obligates belief in them. It's not up for debate. There is no debate. There is. Uh, I know people think this in the comments. Science says uh, science can't speak. That's reification. It's a logical fallacy. Science can't say anything at all. It just means knowledge. The source of knowledge is Jesus Christ himself. It is the God-man of the Bible. It is the Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the immutable Godhead is the standard and source of truth. And you need not apologize for that. This authority does not depend on the testimony of any person or church uh, or any faulty cult or something like that, but on God, the author alone. There's no higher standard than God. And this is why I often hit this topic. This is the standard. You don't need to apologize for the Bible. We need to study other sources, of course, to understand theology better. But you need not make any apologies for why you believe the Bible or why others are commanded to obey and believe the Bible. Therefore, the scriptures are to be received because they are the word of God. Isn't that a circular uh, thing, a thing of circle? Everyone's highest standard is a, is a circle. It's just not a vicious circle. It's dependent on its own claim, but there's no higher authority than God. So who else are you going to go to? At every level, when you have an ultimate truth standard, there is no higher authority, and thus it is circular. The question is, is it viciously circular? And it really doesn't matter because God's word is true no matter what people say. The supreme judge for deciding all religious controversies, human teaching, etc., is the scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, 66 books. Our faith finds its final word there. Next point on the London Baptist Confession, this saving repentance that we need. Repentance is not penance. It is given by God. It is a gospel grace in which those who are made aware by the Holy Spirit of the many evils of their sin by faith in Christ humble themselves for it with godly sorrow, hatred of it, and self-loathing. They pray for pardon and strength of grace and determine and endeavor by the provisions from the Spirit to live before God in a will-pleasing way in everything. This is a summation of the Christian life, guys. This is why this confession is so helpful. So many people are not articulate in what they believe. The grace of faith enables the elect to believe so that their souls are saved. It is the work of the Spirit of Christ in the heart. Faith is ordinarily produced by the ministry of the Word. Why are you preaching the Bible if people can't repent and believe? I didn't say that they won't. I said they can't. God must change the heart. It's a work of God. This is not some how-to be saved channel. This is the grace of God being proclaimed and God basically regenerating and giving light to the heart of the elect. That's how it works. God's chosen that way to work. It's 1 Corinthians 1. Uh, by this same ministry and by administration, baptism, and the Lord's Supper, prayer, and other means, faith is increased and strengthened. So there you have it. We don't rest on the science. When people look around, they look at the beauty of creation. They have uh, basically general revelation. All people have a conscience. All people have creation. They're without excuse. But people need the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit 
and the special revelation of the gospel proclaimed or preached or the Bible itself, essentially to cut through the cloud and confusion of spiritual deadness. People are spiritually dead. I want to point out something here. Look at this hand. This hand is a picture of humanity. This is uh, this is ridiculous. This is ironic. Dead people don't reach for things. Spiritually dead people don't understand the Bible. They cannot. They are spiritually discerned. They lack the ability. But God may perhaps grant them repentance. Why are you always doing evangelism if people can't believe? Uh, because it's commanded by God, and it is the means that God or has ordained to bring in his people. And I want people to be saved. But if you think, again, that you have the authority, ability, or winsomeness to persuade and regenerate people, you are so arrogant and naive. And this is why people hate, oh, you said Calvin. Calvin was a murderer. He did this and that. Okay, go study history. Go study reality and actually deal with the arguments instead of trying to smear the person. That's an ad hominem, and it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant to the argument. Well, he didn't have good character. Okay, let's say that you're right. I'm not saying you are, but even if you are, deal with the actual argumentation. And this is where people just don't want to do the homework. They don't want to actually dig in and understand because they cannot understand. The people that come against this are looking to their intellect and their reason as if it can somehow regenerate their heart, as if they are somehow autonomons and able to rightly divide the word of God apart from the author of the word of God. But the Holy Spirit illuminates the Bible. He's the author. He helps you understand. And apart from that, you will never understand or trust the Bible. So hopefully this video, though a bit of a rant, is helpful to see the sufficiency of the Bible, the authority of the Bible, the necessity of the Bible proclaimed and taught and declared with power and authority. So no more mamby-pamby preaching, no more all oh, shocks. If you just believe, now I'm not against evidential apologetics in places like Answers in Genesis. I think evidence can be very helpful in the believer's life. I think it can really help strengthen the faith of the believer, but I don't think it's going to grant faith in the unbeliever. It will not cause them to believe. It is only a sovereign work of God that we believe in the gospel in the death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man Jesus Christ. So if you haven't yet, put all of your faith in the perfect life, substitutionary, atoning, hell-bearing atonement on the cross, death, and resurrection of the God-man Jesus Christ, because there is salvation in no other name. There's no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. You must repent and believe. It's a command, not a suggestion. The boy's saying, why are you, why are you saying that? They can't believe. Uh, it's a command. It is not a suggestion. It's a command from God. You have no ability to respond. He is right to judge you unless he chooses to save you. And it's not based on you. That's what grace is. So if you're still watching this and you agree with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or anything I've said here today, please take a moment and hammer that like like the 95 Theses and leave a comment below. Again, if you uh, don't understand this video, please watch it again. Maybe slow it down. Watch it a few times. Slowly read what is on the screen. You are able to pause the video and read what is written. That can be done and it is helpful. So take a moment, do that. Thank you so much and God bless.